How's it going? This is Lee Chess Plays. Hello to Rochess. First opponent of the day. Happy Sunday, everyone. This is Lee Chess Plays. Two hours of 3 plus 0 blitz against yours truly. Anyone can challenge. We are streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, as always. Yes, we got both of those platforms fired up. Let's play B6 here. I also play this line from the white side. This little knight f3 move order. Hello, Sean Pinto, also suspect agent. And Darko Twitch. Hello, Scott Trick. Greetings, no joke chess, our faithful mod. What's up to you? Hello, Dugong. Greetings to our YouTube friends as well. Amazing dude. I see you in the YouTube chat. Also, Rafal. All right. I already have 50 plus challenges. This looks like it's going to be a, uh, a good day of streaming. Let's take here and play knight e4. Often you want to jump this knight in if you can with tempo on the queen. And let's see how ambitious I want to get in playing against this bishop. Maybe I'll expand aggressively with the pawns. Remains to be seen. Hello, Brendan Denden. Also, Andy Hab. All right. Kel Andrus, feel free to challenge me. My username is Fins, by the way, F I N S. Uh, okay, let's go up and play D6. Usually, you want to develop like this, F5. These are all normal decisions, I'd say. Will White put the bishop on D3? Probably. Yep. Now, I mentioned I can try to get aggressive here with, with g5. It's interesting to do this. I noticed that the engines really like this, and I'm going to try to play like an engine. Keyword play like an engine, not actually be or consult an engine. Don't do that. <laughs> but it's okay to attempt to play like one with your human faculties. Hello, Edward Reynolds. Not too much, man. Having a good Sunday. Hope you are as well. Uh, thank you, AJA. Says, good evening out of Berlin. All right. Maybe I'll try to play a Berlin defense in your honor. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and play h5. Just cramping this bishop. Now, again, I've just seen a lot of engine games where, for whatever reason, it really enjoys uh, pushing the pawns like this with the open king. I shouldn't say for whatever reason, because we know that this is a tendency for engines. I think that's been pretty well borne out over the past several years that they... They enjoy pushing these knight and rook pawns, and they do so in positions that humans would feel a bit more uh, recalcitrant to do so. All right, now I can probably win g2. Just thinking if I want to take this one or this one. Probably I want to take the dark square bishop. I actually don't even think it's a particularly close decision. Get rid of that dark square bishop and snipe this pawn down here. Hello, IBM Shallow Blue. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> says, I also play like an engine, the kind you find in a junkyard in a 75 Pinto. <laughs> That's fair enough. I think many people can relate in the chat. Doing that with the pawns around my king terrifies me, says Brendan. Yeah, yeah. Me as well. I mean, I have to be careful here. If white plays something like e4, which it seems very likely white's going to try to wind up for, then uh, no doubt I got to be careful. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to play queen f6. This kind of puts me in the line of fire here, but what I'm trying to do with this move is hold up this move by threatening here. Um, likewise, maybe a5 now. Let's try to... Whoa. Instantly plays king b1. All right, white's probably realizing that their time situation is not great. All right. Um, a4 is obvious, but can I do something better than that? Let's go c5, because I think at this point, white actually um, doesn't mind me playing. Okay, goes there. And the knight is so poorly placed, I don't know if I want to chase it anymore. Mm, I guess I'll take. Let's take once. Because if he takes with the pawn, then I don't have to worry about e4 from white any further. So that seems like a win to me. Let's go here. Both getting a bit low on time. So I'm going to speed up a little bit or attempt to. Here. Mm, I guess I'm going to take this. He does have a check on g5, but I'm going to block. 
All right, we'll bring this back up two pawns now. And I think with this monster knight coming into F3, I should be in really good shape. Oh, and I take with check. My opponent resigns. Thank you. Did I say row chess? It's actually RCW chess. I was just merging. No, I wasn't even merging a letter. I just, that's a C, right? I feel like I'm getting old. I, I don't use glasses or contacts, but I totally read that C as an O. Which I guess in English would make sense because you would think that there's a vowel in there. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the game. Um, I think the bishop f4 move is a little suspect because of because of what happened in the game. Like that bishop does become a target. That's why usually they end up pinning in this in this line. So one of the main ways for white to play is just a3 immediately, and then if black goes for this, you'll see white pinning, which which kind of slows black down. Even here, I mean, black it's not out of the question for black at some point to try something like this. So that can definitely happen. I even remember, so I lived in New York City for a year, and I remember playing on my phone against, like, Shredder or something like that. Or no, it might have been Droidfish, actually. I think it was, like, Droidfish. This is probably circa, like, 2011, 2012. And I would play it on my phone when I was on the subway because you didn't need an internet connection or anything. It's just an app on your phone. And I remember even back then, the way that it was playing was like this a lot of times on the black side of these positions. So it's always stuck out of my head. Thanks for the game, RCW Chess. Um, next opponent coming up here, Bogdan. Let's do it. D4 it is. I'm kind of feeling like a Joe Baba London. I'm inspired by Grandmaster Hans Neiman. If you guys have been watching him in uh, the charity chess tournament that's going on right now. E6. He is like the man when it comes to the Jobava London system. Like one of the current, I think, players to watch in this variation, if any of you happen to play it. Comes up with really interesting ideas. He knows the nuances of this line very, very well. So just a hot tip. Pay attention to Hans's games in this line. Uh, hello, David says, no lights on the tree. Yeah, I actually took the tree down. I, um, I had a couple requests from my mother to take the tree down. She thought it was embarrassing. She's like, I watched your stream and that, that tree is still up. John, you got to take that down. <laughs> so uh, I'm acquiescing to her request. You got you to make mom happy. Okay, let's take here. How aggressive should I get? G4? I don't know how. Well, all right. Again, I'm going to follow my policy on Lee Chess plays, which is if I question something, if it's borderline, just go for the aggressive option. Just do this. <laughs> put some Halloween de decorations. Well, she said maybe you should put some like Easter related stuff coming up on there because it's coming up. So, you know, I, I liked it for the lighting mainly. That's why I um, was into it. All right. How do I feel about a sack here? This, I think, would be really pushing it. Check here, G6, take. I just know that's unsound for me. But I, again, I'm really tempted. I could also take one of the knights, then play like queen h5. Um, this is just not working. It's not working. And while interesting, I don't think I can justify bishop takes h7. I really don't. But I'm trying. I'm still trying. I'm attempting to create a narrative in my head that makes sense when it comes to this. Which is a dangerous thing to do in chess. All right, I'm going to take here and I'm going to play h4. We're going to go for the slow burn attack. Let's tell Bogdan thank you. He says, hello, John, big fan. Hello, Pompizer, by the way. John, don't tell me you are not playing with the vertical mouse. Yeah, I have just the traditional mouse today. I was using the vertical mouse earlier, but I'm still not confident in my speed with the vertical mouse as much as I'm getting used to it. I actually, I was at the coffee shop the other day and someone came, came over and he was asking me about the vertical mouse. He's like, hey, I've always seen those around. I've never used one. What's your opinion of it? 
So uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll pick it up as a result. Should I castle this way? I kind of have to now. I mean, th this pin is a little uncomfortable. This looks a little silly now, but at least I have the two bishops. Ooh, do not tempt, e tempt me, Bogdan. Queen h5 here. Take, take. I have a draw there, but probably not much more. Yeah, not much more than that. I'm going to go here. Play g6. John, I am surprised you didn't settle for a bag over the tree. It's still not too late. I, the tree is actually over there, but I just had to take it out of webcam view. <laughs> it's still not too late, though. Let's go here. I'm trying to offload my doubled pawns, open up the position. Long term, I like the fact that I have this pawn on g6. That could be real handy for the attack. Let's keep this bishop. He goes bishop f5. I'm going to play h5. Really solidify this in there. It's just remarkable how often a pawn like this deep in the enemy position near their king can be an attacking asset way into um, the end game even. All right, now I should be heads up about this. This, this I think, is a good move. And I got to be heads up about my time. All right, I'm going to go here. I'm actually sacrificing a pawn with this move. Let's see if Bogdan picks up on it. Okay, goes for that. Well, let's take... Eh, I'm going to go here. Now I really got to hurry because I'm behind on the clock. Ooh. I don't know about that decision. That seems unwise because I've got the two bishops now. Uh, let's go here. I'm going to try to open things up a little bit. Whoa. He's really making it complicated. Let's do this. Watch out for the skewer. Here. Rook f1. I just take and then take with the king. This is trouble for my opponent. Um, that being said, I got to be on the ball here. Let's take once. And then I'm going to hide my king. Oh, I'm really behind on the clock, aren't I? Oh! Oh, he blundered, though. <laughs> I actually mouse slipped that, but I'm going to get the checkmate. <laughs> he didn't expect me to block with the queen. <laughs> they never expect the queen block. <laughs> I mouse slipped queen h3, and it actually worked out fantastically in my favor. Oh, I guess the queen was on g4, though, so this arguably would have happened anyways. But, uh... <laughs> that was hilarious <laughs> yeah I totally didn't mean to play queen h3 oh uh, yeah I, I guess even if I had played king g2 given that he's playing rook g5 that he had decided on that move what did I tell you guys the g6 pawn you know notice that was the only thing that allowed me to save this game win the game because this is covered yeah so queen d8 is the only move, and I take it. Thanks for the game, Bogdan. Um, I think, although you were losing at the end, you made the right call and starting to play fast here. I was hemming and hawing like, uh, do I watch rookie f1? Do I want to take this right away? I really burned too much time, even though the position's winning for white. That said, I mean, you are probably, yeah, you are better right around here. I thought here you probably... Oh, you can just go bishop h3 right away. Yeah, I, I was only thinking this line. And I was willing to sack that pawn to keep these intact and keep the light square bishop. But yeah, bishop h3 directly is a pretty decent idea. White's going to have some compensation, practically speaking. But All right, well, as I said, this is pushing a little bit, this g4 idea. Just to show you guys real quick, um, like bishop, bishop takes h7 here while tempting. Greek gift style, King G8, G6, Knight G4 is interesting. Maybe trying to check there, but trying to set up some sort of mate there. This is just too reckless. You're going to get eaten alive by a strong opponent if you do something like this. That was time scramble cheese. Indeed. Thank you for the game, Bogdan. Next game coming right up. Chess for life, 384. Good luck.
Okay. So I played um in that first game. Um did I play a Sicilian? I can't even remember. Let's play a Pierce. Good luck. Have fun. Mm, okay, well, let's play the proper Pierce. We'll go G6. Dragon? Not quite. But maybe I'll work in a dragon. Now, I think here, knight takes e4 is the correct approach. I mean, this position looks very basic, but I believe this is the issue with the bishop on c4 is that black can do this and kind of break out. Now I'm actually even up a pawn. Whether I can keep it mm, remains to be seen. Let's do this. Now, h3, I think, is highly likely, even though I'm not sure it's the best move. But people don't like to be pinned for very long, so they often try to clarify things. However, there is some pressure here. I'm thinking of h3, take, take, knight c6. Okay, so I think white realized that I have some pressure here, so white's advancing. And maybe now... I'm going to go here. Uh, Jeff says, I don't like the Pierce so much because the opponent can get a huge kingside attack on you. That is true. That, that um, can definitely happen. Yes, you must be careful. Let's go knight f6. Knight b6 also interesting, but I'm going to try to block this bishop a little bit. Can we challenge you to a specific color? I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. As long as it's 3 plus 0. Mm, it's good coffee, I must say. All right, um, let's play rook e8, align with the queen, but also that's just some further protection on e7. How much do I mind a dark square bishop trade? I might want to keep my dark square bishop, you know? Nah, uh, I'm going to play a6. I feel like this is useful in almost all cases. I I'll let the trade happen. Gets my king up a little bit. I can park the queen here. It's a little bit annoying, but I think it should be fine for me. Play b5 now. John, do you work out? Yes, I do. I've gotten back into it um, a lot more in the past month. Um, I think I mentioned to you guys, I was part of the reason I got that vertical mouse is I was having a ton of pain in my uh, wrist up to my elbow, basically, uh, with one arm, like my dominant arm. And I'm pretty sure I had like tennis elbow, uh, tendonitis, something like that. It was just nonstop soreness and pain pretty much every day for about, I want to say about three months. And then it was really intense for about two weeks. But that did quickly go away after like this initial um, period of high intense pain. And I think it just more or less had to work itself out. But long story short, yeah, I've been getting back in the gym because I was pretty much unable to do any sort of lifting. I think this move should be winning. Any sort of lifting for a while. Ooh, actually, that might have been a really bad decision by me. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, this might be okay. Um... I hope, okay, my opponent did not notice knight takes e8 check, but I, mm, yeah, we'll look at that afterwards. So now here I'm going to take this one. Do you use a wrist rest? Yeah, I do now, actually. Now I use one for my keyboard. I, I got a new keyboard as well, because I think my previous keyboard was causing some issues too. I'm not sure how much like those adjustments with a workstation if you will, matter. But it seems to have helped a little bit. But having now had some personal experience with like tennis elbow tendonitis, I honestly think it mostly just needs to work itself out. Let's give a check first. Then I'm going to go here. And we're going to trade A pawn for B pawn basically because white should go after this. And here, um, let's play rook A3. 
My king is awfully close. I might be able to get that involved as well. Uh, let's go here. I need to speed up a little bit. Let's go here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is one of these positions that's like borderline between a win and a draw. I think now I have pretty good winning chances because white's king should be kind of cut off. On the clock, though, it's a bit of a different story. I'm behind. But yeah, uh, in terms of the position, I'm feeling pretty good here. Maybe it's still a draw. The white's down a pawn. The king's cut off. It's going to be tough for white. And if they check me, I'm walking in here and I'm threatening mate. This is now probably just a win. Still got to be a little careful, though. Must win the time scramble. Which is looking increasingly difficult. Oh, and that's checkmate. Okay. Yeah, actually here, E2 check would be the better way to play it. But I guess this is probably winning too. Thank you, Chess for Life. Another close game. I got to watch the clock. Uh, yeah, I got a little careless in the middle game because a knight takes E8. Chess for Life. You were, uh, you were winning with the in-between move. Knight takes E8 with check. I would have been down a piece because, let's say I go king F8. So if I take with a rook, you take here and you're up a rook. King here, take, take, you're up a knight. I mean, your knight has a little bit of trouble, but uh, for the engine, it's no trouble at all. <laughs> Plus four and a half. So, yeah, I rushed e6 there. I did not do my due diligence. King f8, best move. Instructive, very instructive point, because that rules out some of the in-between checks and the problems. But thank you for the game. I wonder how many people play knight takes e4 here. Masters database. Yeah, that's the top move. Lee chess. Second move. C6 played more often. Okay. Yeah, so this is the center fork trick. Just clarifies the central situation. Hence why if they play this way, like with the knights coming out here, they often have the bishop on E2 instead. All right. So I've dodged some bullets here already today. Fire on board. You're up next. Let's play knight F3. Yes, the players are picked randomly. I can confirm that is correct. I just have a button up here, accept random challenge. When are we going to see me as a GM? Asked uh, uh, Yugur Idil. You know, I have not played an over-the-board tournament in about two and a half years. So <laughs> I am overdue for playing OTB. I was thinking, of, I talked about this on Lee Chess Plays last week. I was thinking about playing the Reykjavik Open, but I'm going to play a quirky line here I played before. I don't think I'll be able to make that happen. Um, no, you never know. I might pull a last-minute audible, but yeah, suffice it to say, I'm, I have not been playing tournaments. I don't feel like I'm in tournament chess shape. I think I could do okay if I play a tournament because you know I have played a, a lot of online chess the past two and a half years, but I have not studied chess in a serious capacity for myself in quite a while. <laughs> Hello, Stellion. Um, let's go here, line up with the queen. Thanks again to Lee Chess for making this happen every week. Lee Chess plays. It's completely free to use Lee Chess. Um, it always will be. And thanks to all the people who make Lee Chess the site it is. And all of you wonderful users as well. Uh, Shakyab, someone asked that earlier. So you, I have no problem with you choosing a color. Uh, I think that's fine. Let's take here. If knight d5, I'm going to go queen a3. The structure actually where you take on f4 is, is kind of interesting. Because you get a lot of defense of the knight on e5. John, are you an Android or iPhone guy? I don't know. I will say I've used both. 
I don't know if I want to specify which device I'm currently partial to. Not to be too paranoid. There's not a whole lot someone can do with that info, but... <laughs> I think I can get this pawn. This pawn seems okay to take. Ooh, this queen is looking uh, kind of lonely. I mean, knight e7. I also play e4. Knight e6 probably is the move here. Because I'm just noticing it forks the rook and the bishop. Hello, Flicker Alex. Do you think Daniel will be a great teacher if you want to go for GM? You know, it would be great to work with him if I ever did decide to uh, pursue the title. It might take here too, by the way, one of these nights. Um, probably, I'm going to guess Danya wouldn't want to work with me. Not because we aren't on great terms. We are actually on really good terms. Um, but working with like an IM, pursuing GM... That's a pretty demanding thing is the issue. Like that's, that's a working relationship that's uh, high effort for the coach because of the fairly high level of play involved. Ooh, okay. I think this is going to be pretty good for me. I can check, check. Just working out if there's some sort of force mate. I think I can lift the rook maybe at the end. Let's check here first. But he might be open to doing some, some one-off sessions or something. I might reach out to him when the time comes. I'm thinking here if I can play this move. That's probably too much, though. He takes with check. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Let's do rook d6. Not worried about a fork here because this would hang. It would cut off the rook. Also, I have a check if I need it. It's harder to teach someone who is relatively close to you in skill. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's a huge difference between Danya and I, for one thing, but no, I think the bigger thing is that, um, it would just be more time consuming for him to like prepare material and, um, it would have to be worth his while. I wouldn't want him to feel obligated to teach me just cause we're friends. Yeah. I saw this line. I thought maybe I could go here. I think there's one defense for black though, that might spoil my attack, but we'll see if fire on board finds it. How long will I stream today? Another about hour and a half. So we're still pretty early in the stream. Yep, this is the defense. Queen d8. Only move. My opponent finds it. Very good. Ah, but I guess I can just take and play h5. I didn't see that initially. All right, so now I'm up a piece. Just got to win the game. Just win. Let's play here. This is a safe pre-move. It only registers if my opponent takes the pawn or pushes. You know, and I think I'm just going to plug this here and then go after this pawn. All right. Back this off. Maybe swing the rook over. Looks all good. I can take. Takes, I promote. Run the other pawn up the board. All right. Thank you for the game, Fire on Board. That's a great book, by the way, Fire on Board. Uh, Alexei Shirov's autobiography. He actually wrote two of them. Uh, but the first one, I think, is especially good. Yeah, thanks for the game. I think the position around your king was definitely sketchy for a while. Queen b8 looks like the move that gave me some pretty nice play here. I have my knights kind of posted aggressively, eyeing up this pawn here. I think once I pick off that pawn, it's pretty darn good for white. I feel like I misexecuted the attack a little bit. Kind of curious, like around here, let's say, if I could have played this better. Take, take. Because if I can get a rook over to the G file, this is GG. Check. Yeah, the engine says just pick up this pawn. Or check again like I did. King H1, uh-huh, King H1 trying to come over here. Yeah, I was mostly focused on trying to get a rook via the third rank. I briefly considered doing this, 
Oh, that's winning. Wait a minute. We got we to gotta check ourselves real quick. So if here, here, the threat is rook g3 checkmate. Pushing the h-pawn or something's not going to help. You also can't get the knight over because I just take it when it goes to the g-file. I thought black could move the rook now. Like, let's say, I don't know, rook e8. But what did I miss? Check here. Is it going to be something like this? It's probably going to be this. Threatening checkmate. And then there's all these, like, scenarios where, let's say he comes back to defend. I can just calmly take the pawn on h7 and keep the queen pointed at e7. This is checkmate coming up. Is that what I missed? A slow motion attack. Rook g7. There you go. Only move that wins. Once you see it on the board, it makes sense. But I would only feel confident about this with a few seconds of analysis when I know that rook c3 is a good move, if that makes sense. Like the fact that I instantly, instantly see plus 10 here, then I understand why that attack works. But in the game, like that's not obvious. Like I just kind of looked at this and saw that black has an escape. I'm like, mm, this looks murky. If this backfires, I, I might lose the game. But that's a good example of how patterns in chess uh, manifest themselves and how, you know, if you ever watch like post-mortem analysis between good players, there might be um, a commentator or a press event organizer um, basically like mention something that the computer likes and then it instantly clicks for them why a move that was not played in the game but the engine likes is in fact a good move. That, that's a good example of that right there. At rook g7. And no matter how black tries to defend, this is gg. Even if rook e7, take here. Black can, I guess, escape and lose the queen, but completely crushing. But I guess the way I played it is not so bad. This is still plus five. Yeah. So fire on board. Thanks for the game. Tough one. Let's go to the next position. Next position. Well, I guess it is a position. It's a starting position. Everyone sucks but me is the opponent. Let's play G6. Will we get a Jinji Indian? Knight C3, C5. It's a free move. I'll do it even against D take C5. That's fine. One of my favorite openings in chess. It's such a unique opening. Hi, John. How do you see tactics quickly in your bullet games? All pattern recognition, my friend. That is what most of chess is once you've reached a certain level. Remember, for top guys that you watch, streamers, guys like Hikaru, Danya, um, Andrew, picking some of the guys who are especially good at bullet, along with being just really, really good overall chess players, remember that they don't often have to make very many difficult decisions per game. Oftentimes... Um, their pattern recognition is so strong and their instincts are so good, they're making great decisions if, by expending minimal effort. Whereas for many of you watching, and often myself included, um, we may have many difficult decisions per game. I'm going to take this pawn because I don't really buy this exchange sacrifice. I think that's a often under-discussed topic in chess, by the way. It's just like the effort required to produce good decisions. Because it's a double whammy for like a good player versus a lower-rated player. Um, you know, master versus amateur, let's say. The master has the experience advantage and can calculate better, has better openings, you know, all these things. And they also have the energy expenditure advantage oftentimes like they can make good decisions more naturally i mean you, i guess you could argue it's it's part of the experience advantage but they may not fatigue as quickly for instance i can't tell you how many games i've won against lower rated players where it was quite even for a long time but i can play just normal baseline decent moves a lot longer than they can with minimal energy expended on a very, very high level, you could argue that's how Magnus beats a lot of his Super GM opponents. You guys remember the World Championship? Remember that uh, infamous, what was it, game? Was it game six? That really long one that Magnus won with Rook, Knight, and Pawns against Nepo's Queen? 
Yeah. That's right, Andy Hab. Andy Hab says the energy expenditure is such a huge factor in OTB tournaments. Totally. Because over the board events, multi round uh, event, uh, games in a tournament, absolutely exhausting. So the more you can conserve your energy, the better. How many challenges do I have? Over 50 right now. I don't know exactly how many, but definitely more than 50. How can I train chess endurance? You got to become like one punch chess man. You know, you got to do a uh, thousand tactical puzzles a day. Let's play this one. You have to play 10 rapid games with an analysis. You have to get your reps in on homework uh, or opening problems. Drill 100 positions per day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, mostly that endurance comes from, do you think I'm going to get Queen H1 maiden? I got to try. I got to try. I want to pre-move it, but that would be a risky pre-move. But mostly playing longer games and just getting used to extended periods of concentration. That's how you improve your chess endurance. I'm tempted to break out of this. I mean, it's not a great decision. Should I establish the bathtub? Let's create the bathtub structure. As we know, this is a winning structure if you can achieve it. It is very, very strong. Ooh, and this is a nasty move. It's going to take maybe and threaten checkmate. I'm going to play it safe. This is kind of a cowardly move, but I'm going to do it because he has one second. So as long as I avoid checkmate, I should be good. To my opponent's credit, he's making a lot of moves with one second left. <laughs> that was impressive. Okay. Everyone sucks but me. Thank you for the game. I do appreciate it. So you went for an exchange sack on H5. Pawn push and then take. You know, that is a line. Maybe, maybe you've seen something like that before. But if you're going to do it, you should do it right from the jump. So as soon as black plays f5 in the Jinji Indian, you should play h4 right here. h4, knight f6. And if take, take, there are some games with this, but I think this is considered exceedingly risky for black. Exceedingly risky, because my king is completely open. I think they play like this. I've seen some games like this, and black tries to hide here. If you search the database... Here's one master game, probably some further games, in the, a lot of games in the Lee Chess database. Oh, Ginger GM, of course. <laughs> so of course, Simon has played this position. Looks like black scores reasonably well here, but yeah, you, gotta, you really got to know what you're doing here. E5, best move, evidently. Interesting. So yeah, you kind of mix lines because you played a couple standard, but not necessarily best moves, let's call them, and then went for it, but I just don't know that you have the compensation here to back it up because your kingside play is a little bit slower. You don't have like your queen pointed at the pawn. But thank you for the game. Is John an anime enjoyer? You know, I'm not actually. I know almost nothing about anime, but I do know about One Punch Man because the reason why is um, I was really interested in body weight exercises. And when I would like research body, body weight exercises, uh, and what like routines people do in a day, uh, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, stuff like that. Otis 48, are you there? Knock, knock. People would reference One Punch Man, which I guess is an anime character. All right, Otis, I'm not present. You can always challenge later, Otis, if you come back and see that you had a game, but it didn't go through. Uh, Sasha Myers on YouTube says, how do I play you? You have to challenge me. My username is F-I-N-S. A mod might be able to drop a link to that you can use directly to challenge me on Lee Chess. It's got to be three plus zero. Sri Arabundo, Arabindo, are you there? Guess not. All right. Two opponents in, the, in a row who are AFK. GRM, we're counting on you. Are you there? We've played before. GRM, NYM. Going once, 
We're going to get three in a row that are AFK? Going twice. Going three times. Okay. Next opponent. Buko Bruce. It got to be Buko Bruce. Bucho Bruce, maybe? There we go. Whew. I was worried. I was a little concerned. Ten kilometer run, ten thousand push ups, and ten thousand air squats. Ah, is that the one punch man routine? <laughs> nice. Every single day until you're bald. <laughs> right. I do remember that aspect of it. All right. Now let's try to attack this bishop. I'm going to win this bishop pair. I'm not going to take it yet, though. I don't have to take it yet. So let's go g6. Arguably, white could go bishop h4 if they want it, but that would be a lot of bishop moves. Um, wait a minute. Do I have to worry about bishop take c4? Maybe. But it's interesting. So therefore, following my... Um, my rule, I'm going to allow it. Bishop f7, king f7, knight g5. Idea 96 would have been interesting. I would have played king g8, knight e6, queen e8, knight takes c7, queen d8. But white could have won the uh, rook in the corner. That's usually not a good idea for white, though. There's a line in the... Philidor. I think it's Philidor. That's like that. Now let's play a6, because I get the feeling white's going to try to go this direction. Uh, how do I play after challenge accepted? Well, if I accept your challenge, you should get a game in. But when you send your challenge, you enter a pool of players where I just randomly select from that pool. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't guarantee that you will get a game. But feel free to challenge. I would love for you guys to challenge. This pawn is hanging, but I'm not particularly worried about it. I'm trying to storm on this side of the board, so let's keep, let's keep going. If a4, I'm going to go bishop d7. And attack this pawn. All right. Maybe c5 coming up, but no, I think mostly I'm just going to try to win this pawn. I'm also holding up g4 in a way. So if I were white, I would start thinking about trying to attack. Do I take that pawn? This is debatable. I'm actually not going to take it. I'm going to keep my bishop trained over here. This is one of these things like, yeah, I could take it, but arguably white's not that upset by it because it opens some lines towards my king. Flicker Alex says, interestingly, training physically improves your concentration on your chess games. And now my knight kind of blocks the attack. Uh, even though chess is a mind sport, if you're not on your A game, you're not going to get better at the game. I definitely agree to an extent. You know, I think, um, I think a lot of top players have kind of wised up to the fact that um, aerobic training, being able to play longer games, Magnus has talked about this many times. He's a pretty fit guy. And he really believes it. Uh, it's crucial in the longer games and these these arduous tournaments that he plays to perform at a high level. Yeah, I think there's all sorts of things that especially come into um, tournament play that if you play online exclusively, like may not enter your thought process so much. Um, should I play a three? Because I. I it would be really funny if white plays b3 here and totally entombs this bishop. Mummifies the bishop on a2. All right, now I see some tempting tactics. Let's take here first. And I think I'm going to pop off with rook takes a2 next, assuming white takes with the king. Also, if they play pretty much any other move. <laughs> I think managing your sleep, too, is an underrated thing um, in tournaments. Okay, this looks like a pretty monster idea now. Rook takes a2 tempting as well, but I'll go for knight a4. Oh. Ugh. Knight c3. Forking everything. I can take the bishop next move if I want. Bruce resigns. Thank you for the game, Bruce. Yeah, so 
I don't know. I feel like you kind of castled into an attack there. These positions can go either way sometimes. But probably you're trying to force an attack that you're just behind in when you castle queenside like this. Yeah, the engine loves black's position already. That's pretty shocking in a way. Shocking, also not shocking. Minus two and a half. I would never think this is minus two and a half. It's equal material. But admittedly, my, my initiative unfolds pretty quickly here. Even if I didn't play it exactly as how the engine wants. The engine wants C5 here. I went for a, a knight move and then a pawn push. Daring you to take here. But that did look risky. A4, bishop D7. I mean, the engine thinks this is like barely playable for you. I mean, I'd be so worried here. I guess the knight is backing up the bishop, but yeah, looks looks very risky. Was engine saying bishop takes f7 is good? Let's see. I would doubt it. Ooh, actually, you're right. Oh, well, we maybe have to give it more time to think, but this this is an interesting line. Has to be examined. Take. Yeah, now I, I have to play king g8 because king e8, knight e6 is an embarrassing smother of the queen. And king f8 just gets this fork. So I was prepared for this to happen. Again, there's a line in the Philidor that's super similar to this. Here, take, back. In the Philidor, the, this square's open and black actually goes for the pawn on g2. This has been played a few times on Lee Chess, according to the database. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the engine says this is pretty, pretty balanced. I probably would have played like b6 directly, although b6, queen f3, I guess. So I have to watch some ways because basically this knight should be a goner. White should not be able to keep that knight. But even after losing the knight, it's not going to be that clear for the short term because I got a little awkwardness going on with my king. Uh, white does have two pawns for their trouble. Two pawns and a rook against two miners. White has all their pawns remaining. So, yeah, um, arguably I should not have allowed that, but would have been interesting if it had happened. Thanks to the game, Bruce. Next opponent, Mirale Chat. Good luck. Or Mirale Chat. Mm. Let's play D5 this game. I'm trying to think if I can get aggressive somehow. Let's play E6. Mm -hmm. Let's play a triangle, c6. Um, yeah, I'm going to play knight f6. I sometimes play stonewall setups, but not, not at the moment. All right, so we got an anti-Moran variation. Ooh, this line's always interesting. Been a long time since I had the black side of this position. I'll play h6. I remember a little bit about this line. This is the... The Shirov Shabalov or Shabalov Shirov Gambit. And I think White's not supposed to play G5 this quickly, as far as I remember. Can't really tell you why. I don't remember. Let's take here. This I remember is a pretty big theme. Like take and then B5. Hmm. Bishop takes was probably possible there because if I took back, there was queen g6. So I think I misplayed that, but my opponent didn't take advantage. You can still try bishop g6. I got to be a little careful here. I think I'm going to go queen e7. Not going to take this pawn yet. I'm going to try to shore this up. I could take it now. I could also play e5. Play e5. Now I feel pretty safe because this is all blocked. John, what are your thoughts on the old Benoni, especially as an anti-London opening? The old Benoni. Can you tell me the move order? I just want to make sure it's the line I'm thinking of. Let's take. And then I'm going to go probably 95. Ah, no, let's play bishop takes h2. I think I can take this pretty cleanly. Just c5 on move one? Hmm. Yeah, interesting, somewhat flexible option. 
Not played very often at the higher levels, but you do see it plenty online against D4. Um, as an anti-London option, yeah, it's interesting because uh, if white plays bishop f4, you'll just take d4 and then probably play knight c6 and likely have a good position. So I don't hate it, especially as an anti-London uh, idea. Eh, it's just castle here. I'm allowing this, but I think... After the trades, I should be able to pick up a piece. Here, too, I might just swap everything on d3. I think that's probably the best. And if take, actually, this check looks annoying. Yeah. Yeah, d4, c5. If they go d5, you can play a Benoni. Um, you can maybe try to navigate it into, like, a Jinji Indian, even a Leningrad. Uh, maybe a Banco in some cases. So it has some flexibility in that sense. Let's take here. And now, this looks a little shaky. C5, I think, makes a good deal of sense. My opponent's pretty pinned down here. So, yeah, I'm going to go C5. I'm going to open the bishop. Why didn't your opponent... Pin the bishop with rook h1. Yes, my opponent could have done that. I was just going to castle and connect the rooks had merely a chat played that. Mm. I need to speed up a little bit here. Let's go king b8. I feel strongly white's going to go e5. And then I'm going to play knight d5. King b8 is just kind of nice. It sidesteps this. You know what's really annoying? If you play d4 and someone plays c5, my read was correct, by the way. Um, what's really annoying for them is if you just play c3 on move two, which offers a transposition to an exchange slot, uh, exchange slav. I found that that's, in practice, the most irritating option for one c5 players. That also might be the choice of a London player. All right, so now I'm winning. Let's just make sure we get the job done here. Go queen down. My opponent blundered a piece. And if rook here, I think knight e3, probably. Um, there's a check. Well, this could be a nice conclusion. All right, I'm going to do this. Uh, I don't know that I should have done this, actually. Nah, now nah, this wins. I was thinking rook d8. Bishop c8, but then rook takes c8 is not so clear. Oh, yeah, whereas this one allows for a nice finale. White has to block with their queen. Oh, and then I don't even take it. I go here. Oh, can I mate with a knight somehow? White resigns, but I was looking at, like, check. Ah, king here, double check. Nah, I just have to take the queen eventually. I don't think there's any tricks at the end here. They could try rook d8. Oh, wait. That's a draw. Look at that. Rook d8 is a draw. Ooh, yeah. I, I played kind of risky there, allowing that. I thought I had two decent options here. Is this really a perpetual? Oh, it is, because white can check from f8 and also b8. Ooh, that would have been an unpleasant surprise for me. Check. And if I go this direction, check here, and then pick up the bishop. And these pawns. Control the flight squares out. And if I go uh, check this direction, then white checks here. Or I guess even back to c5. This is a little net. Yeah, so I got fancy, and that could have uh, backfired significantly. I was thinking about knight before, also a6, just to give the king a little bit of room. Ooh. Well, fortunately, my opponent didn't have a lot of time to figure that out. Yeah, he took on c5, but... That's a nice little perpetual. So I think that whole middle game, once I took the pawn on h2, this felt pretty good here. So I think, yeah, pretty satisfied with how that went up to that point. That being said, I, I'm pretty sure I misplayed the opening to some degree. This is an interesting line that Merle chat played. I just, 
for some reason thought they usually play bishop d2 here. This line used to be fashionable for white. I don't think it's considered... Oh yeah, rook g1 or bishop d2. I don't think this line's considered that great for white anymore. But they are offering a pawn, so if knight takes g4, white's going to play rook g1 and try to attack you here. Actually a fairly modern approach that uh, started getting some traction in the 90s. Okay, so this is all fine. And here, e5. e5 is the main move. White scores pretty reasonably, though. I wonder what the Masters database... Yeah, hardly ever played at Masters level. Although, Jordan Van Foreest recently played this against Abhimanyu Mishra, the youngest Grandmaster in the world. Interesting. And he won with white. All right, so maybe something to look into. Thanks for the game, your late chat. I wonder, um, did you ever have a tactic? Oh, yeah, bishop takes e6. I should mention this before we leave this game. That was strong because I can't take back because of uh, not knight takes e6, which I originally thought, but I realized after I had played b5 that you actually had this option. So that's what uh, could have occurred. Bishop takes e6, and I would have been, been in a tough spot. I would have had to castle or play rook f8, both of which look pretty terrifying. Next up, darkness chess. Good luck. Let's play, let's play in English in this game. Oh, yeah, Jordan Van Forest. Sorry. I have mispronounced his name before. Probably won't be the last time, unfortunately. <laughs> Darkness Chess, are you there? Another AFK. Okay. Uh, Odysseys. Let's play... Hello, AK Drews, by the way. We've played before. Odysseys on YouTube asks, Hello, John. Quick question. In what opening do you have the most theoretical knowledge if the Scandi is not option? What opening do I have the most theoretical knowledge? So I assume you mean against e4 from the black side. Um, I would say probably Sicilian. I play Sicilian a fair amount. Yeah. Mostly play the con and the classical. I think I have a decent amount of knowledge of a couple other lines as well, but that one stands out. I used to know a lot about e4, e5 from the black side, but it's been years since I, I made that a, a main move in my repertoire. We're now in a Grunfeld, by the way. e6, not the main move. Usually black goes c5, so let's try to stop black from castling. Hello, honor guy. Um, yeah, I like semi-slav. Semi-slav is a pretty good option. I play slav, semi-slav mainly against d4. I think choosing a defense against d4 is a little tricky. It's definitely, I think, harder than choosing a defense against e4 that you're comfortable with. Managing the amount of theory, playing something interesting but not overly risky. That's usually how I roll. I've, I found early on I didn't tend to do well in like the very flexible positions where, although black has counterattacking potential, you can easily get smushed if you're not careful, like the King's Indian. I didn't have a natural feel for those positions. Hmm. Let's just go here, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm thinking about maybe sending the knight in through this route. It might be a good time to do that. I could have played queen b4, by the way, because it threatens checkmate on e7, but it kind of invites bishop f8, so that's why I didn't do it. My opponent is fiend kettling their knight. All right. I'm now strongly thinking about this again. Also thinking, do I insert queen b4 now? It still runs into the same issue, though. 
Bishop a6, even interesting here. Kind of slows black down for a few moves, but let's go knight e4. Seems like the most natural. When do you think someone should change opening repertoire? I always play the same things and was wondering. Uh, I think a couple different circumstances. One, if you're objectively just having consistently poor results in a certain opening. Ooh, risky move here because of the d6 weakness. Uh, I think this move should be pretty nice. And two, arguably most important, if you're unsatisfied personally with the lines that you're playing and you want to play something different, you find other lines more interesting, you're just sick of the positions that you get out of a certain opening, I'm sure you'll, you'll have a, a feel for that yourself. But in my mind, that's the most important factor. Ooh, and another big time fork. That was not looking good for black, though. Black was going to lose material there no matter what. We can pre-move this. Take. Check. Mm-hmm. Let's castle queen side now. Kind of a cool move. Oh, they were anticipating knight takes f7, but I castled instead. <laughs> and now I think I have made in two. White to move. Made in two. There's actually two different ways to do it. Bonus points if you list both. Yeah, I'll play the one that you guys maybe would find a little less natural. But yeah, knight f. We could have played knight f5, but I'll play knight c8. Same idea. Just clear the way. Queen and the rook link up. We can pre-move. All right, AK Drews, thank you for the game. Thank you, GG. Um, so you played a line against the English, although it did transpose to a, um, a Grinfeld. You have to be kind of comfortable with Grinfeld themes to play it, personally. Um, so, yeah, they often mix this with the G6, Bishop G7 plan. I can't remember if here, if this is considered, I guess it's okay to play it here, but I usually see it with g6 first, although I guess then white could play e4 maybe. Yeah, this gets played, this move order. And, and here, e4 is not even the top move for white, according to the Masters database. Uh, or sorry, d4 isn't. g3, knight f3, e4, all played more often. So now at this point, we're in a Grunfeld defense. And you got to know to go for c5 or castles and then c5. Oh, that was you, Andy Hab. Got it. Says, that was fun. I had no idea what I was doing. I hate the English. Ah, uh, yeah. Yup. There's a lot of stuff you can do against the English, but yeah, it is a line that not a lot of people study. You might think, like, what do you play against d4? That could determine, for example, like, since I play the Slav, I often meet the English with c6 followed by d5 and it can transpose to a Slav, you can sometimes link your defense to d4 and also the English. Uh, as a standalone defense, I think c5, the symmetrical English, is very strong. I don't believe White has an advantage here. That's highly reliable, as is e5, which is basically a reverse Sicilian. Also another reliable one. Ooh, look at my average centipon loss this game. I gotta brag. Look at that. Single digits, baby. Eight average senti pawn loss, one inaccuracy, which is queen b3. The engine didn't like that quite as much. But we will take single digits when it comes to the average senti pawn loss. That's, uh, that's nice. Thanks for the game. Depressstein. Depressstein. Is that a play on Magnus Carlsen's username? Dr. Nykterstein? Care to show a few moves from the Slav? I'm not familiar with that opening. So that is Black's defense against the Queen's Gambit, which goes d4, d5, c4, c6. If you want to look that up. And there's also the Semi-Slav or the Shebenenko Slav. There's a few different iterations of Slav positions. But that's the main um, defense. 
getting that average sending pond loss below 10 is, is incredibly tough to do. Yeah. Um, for most people, the, um, more volatile tactically the, the game, the less likely you're going to be able to do that. Exactly. For me too, like any game blitz bullet rapid of any sort of length, that was a relatively short game. So a longer game, especially a tactical one where you can get an average senti pawn loss like that is usually very good, but it is pretty rare. Okay, my opponent's trying to trade a little bit. I'm going to keep this bishop. I feel pretty good here because this pawn strikes, strikes me as a little weak. Uh, black can't get their knight out easily without blundering it. And if you advance it, take, and then the d5 pawn is weak. So black faces a dilemma. How do I look that up? You can actually go under tools on Lee Chess. You can go to analysis board, put those moves in there, and then use the opening book, little book icon. You could also go to opening explorer if you want and input the line there. All right, uh, let's just castle. I think my opponent's going to take. I think that's how they're going to resolve it. I'm kind of tempted to take with a pawn here. You know, to try to make that knight bad on h7. Let's try it. Again, following the principle that if I find it interesting, I got to play it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what is your role at Chessable? Are you co-owner or co-founder? How do I look that up? I thought that was, how do I look that up was a reference to the Slav. Um, <laughs> my bad. Um, I am a co-founder. So yeah, I co-founded Chessable back in 2015 along with David Cramley. Um, But I am not involved in the site in any sort of management capacity, um, decision-making, anything like that. Uh, I'm still a contributor to Chessable. I have courses on there. I respond to comments all the time. But we sold Chessable in 2019 to uh, Magnus Carlson's company, actually, Play Magnus. It bears his name. It's a publicly traded company. This is a good move, I think. Despite F6 sometimes being a problem. I'm going to try to re reply aggressively to this. We'll see how this goes. Did Magnus take it over completely and just keep the original team in place? Yeah, largely the team remained intact after uh, the acquisition in 2019, yes. And there are still people who are around back then that are involved in the company. Absolutely. F5. Okay, now I can get this pawn to E6. This should be nice for me. If I couldn't go F5, E6, then my structure was looking a little questionable, but I had some nice momentum there. It wasn't clear where Black should put the knight. I mean, maybe back to B7 was best, but that looked kind of weird. Yeah, I, I could even think about playing h4 now. Maybe I will do that. This is not a good knight here, although maybe black can get it in the game later like that. But uh, let's play e6 first. I'm just going to make this real clean. Keeping h4 in mind, though, these are superfluous knights. To use a Mark Doretsky term. I think good time for h4 now, because if knight e4, which is the only safe square, I take, and then my opponent cannot win that pawn. Yeah, that's right, Mark John. Yep. Play Magnus bought uh, aim chess, I believe. Okay, thank you for the game. So I kind of think this approach with b6 and c6 is like not the greatest in this line because that c6 pawn requires some babysitting, you know, and I, I think you were aware of that. You were trying to play around the knight. Arguably, when I take with the pawn, which I'm, I'm pretty certain the computer is not going to like, by the way, when I take with the pawn, um, I thought you worked your way out of it. Oh, it shows how much I know about chess because the engine says that's better than bishop takes e5. I, I thought for sure the engine was going to yell at me for this move. Like, why would you spoil your pawn structure where you can take with the bishop? 
what, you're going to double your pawns and block your bishop? But, I mean, it, it does stand to reason that this pawn has a cramping effect because the knight can't easily reach f6. That's kind of why I did it. I thought you played this reasonably, though. f6. Yeah, it's just kind of the case this is good for white. Knight b7 is the best move. Which, I, I mean, Fianchetto knight, again, not a great square for a knight. But anywhere else you go, like knight d7, knight e6. Knight d7, I can play this e6 followed by f5 move. That's absolutely dominating. And we saw the issue with this one, too. It's the same problem. So once those pawns get connected, black is so cramped with bad knights. So, yeah, you're in kind of a tough spot. So, yeah, I would avoid that b6 approach. Uh, even h6, I personally don't think h6 is the best way to play it. I would play like this if I were you, Dice, Dice Serpstein, um, where you go like this, and then whether I go knight here or knight here, you can play in a manner as follows. You can send the knight to f8, and there's lots of plans for black where you might go like g6, knight e6, knight g7, bishop f5. Uh, white will often play this way in this line, so black is going to face a pawn roller in the center oftentimes, but this is a bit more of a reliable, robust structure. Thanks for the game. Who's up next? Domino. Domino, Domino, 758. Good luck. Uh, Giuliano says, would be glad to see the king's gambit. Hmm. Okay, I might be able to work that in. Domino is not here. Sorry, Domino. Oh, right at the buzzer. All right, let's play a Dutch. Where are my Dutch players at? Mm. The London Dutch. Yeah. This tends not to be the most exciting. Why does everything you say sound like a press statement? Oh, <laughs> again, I thought that was directed towards me, but you're replying to someone. I'm getting confused looking at chat today. <laughs> Catching up on chat here. Okay, castles. Let's go castles myself. I have the uh, Christmas tree structure going on, the semi-Christmas tree. What is my favorite dubious opening? Definitely the Jinji Indian, which I played several games ago. Because the Jinji is objectively a pretty dubious opening. It is, it's not a great opening for, uh, for black. But if we're talking like Dubious, where we're starting to sacrifice material dubious. I would say probably the Portuguese variation of the Scandinavian. Um, I don't even know if it's fair to call that dubious, though, but you, you have to be willing to give a lot of material on that line to prosecute the initiative. All right, so white is going e4, and if I were the white player and I were going e4, what move would I not want to see? Or how can I make life miserable for white? Let's just play h6. Yeah, I took down the tree. I mentioned this before. My mom, who watches my streams sometimes, she's probably watching today. Hello, mom. I love you. She requested that I take it down. <laughs> She's like, John, it's embarrassing to have that tree up. She's like, can you take it down, please? <laughs> so I, I acquiesced. My mom is embarrassed for me on, you know, a weekly chess playing channel. <laughs> I tried to explain. You know, I was like, a group of chess players, you often don't have to worry about impressing them or not impressing them. 
But uh, I understood her point at the end of the day. Always listen to your mom. Exactly. That's, that's the principle I was going off of. Okay, great position here. I'm liking this a lot, especially if White were to take. You know, my opponent for their rating especially is playing quite well. So I give Domino a lot of credit. Like this position's a little sketchy for Domino, but they're putting in good work. I'm this is not at all simple for me. I think I'm gonna go here. Because the play is gravitating gravitating towards the F file. I want to start getting the heavy pieces working down there. All right, I might be able to take this pawn. That's hanging now. Could also take here, open the attack on the queen. Maybe F3, but F3 is not really a move you want to play in this position. I think I want to take. And if take here, could take with the bishop or the pawn. I think both are fine. All right, let's just go back now. Mm -hmm. Okay, knight's on a good square now. Very fair. Let's keep this bishop. I do need to challenge this knight, though, in the near future. So, like, knight f6 coming up. That's too good of a piece now. I want to attack it. He could have tried to take that pawn with the discovery, but I will show that after the game, Brendan. That's a good question. Um, but I will show after the game why that would have failed. This is also a good move, reinforcing. Mm. Let's see how white responds to this move now. Since white is not cooperating in like trading the knight, they're basically trying to replace it. I'm going to try to set up this threat and open the file here. Yeah, because now when I take, this is a, a problem for white because the queen can no longer recapture. Mm -hmm. Rook f2 is interesting. Probably a decent move. Rook f2, knight takes, and then take here. Uh, taking h2. Let's just take h2. That looks really strong. This white's king is in trouble now. Give a check. Now I've got pretty nice control in the position. I'm just going to prepare to double. Mm. Yeah, you know, Domino is way stronger than the rating. I can tell because they're finding moves that, um, like a 1200. I'm going to guess they don't play a whole lot of Blitz. Let's see if I'm correct. Um, yeah, kudos. GG. Even though it was hard for you at the end, I think you played a lot of good moves. If you play that way at your rating, Domino, you're going to be gaining lots of points. I'm going to bet if Domino has played Rapid or Classical, they're several hundred points higher than their Blitz rating. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Bullet, about 900. Blitz, higher, but not, you know close to their level, I think, and the slower games, the Rapid, 1658. So that's good. You know, this rating progression with my own students, I actually really like to see that because that shows that they have good understanding and it's just kind of a matter of the time control. Thanks for the game. No, I don't. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I think you're agreeing that, yeah, you just, you don't play a lot of fast chess. But thank you for the game. I think um, probably this whole plan of like E4 or D5 maybe. D5 is probably not the best move. Even though it's tempting to open it when black can close it like this. I think the advantage like swings over to black in terms of a plan. Yeah, you can see the engine... Um, pretty conclusively says, it says you're better here, plus one. Wants you to go rookie one, maybe with e4 sometime later. Keeping the tension a little bit more. But when you do this, you're kind of indicating that um, because the center is closed, long-term you might play on the queen side. It's going to be tough to cook anything up on the king side where I do have more space. So d5, wall a, interesting attempt to break open the center. Mistimed. Thanks for the game, and good luck with your chess improvement. 
Aren't you hot with that shirt? Yeah, this is kind of a heavy shirt. It's actually 56 degrees Fahrenheit today, which is um, pretty nice for our standards right now. Let's play a Caracon. So yeah, this is a little bit heavy, but I feel pretty comfy. Mm, let's take. Block with the knight. Aren't the player pools different? Stronger players tend not to play slower time controls. I don't know about that. What do you guys think? I feel like this invites g4 followed by knight e5, so I should probably take. Ooh, and now knight takes d4. I'm not pinned. I'm no longer pinned. Issues here, here, here. Probably take. And now maybe queen c7. Yeah, just defend this. Oh, yeah, Dunskis, I see your question. Uh, yeah, I'm just not going to talk about that on stream here. John, did you ever participate in the Lee Chess 45-45 league? I have not, but I would highly recommend it. I have a lot of students who play in that league. And the Lone Wolf. Shout out to the 45 and the 45. 45-45 and the Lone Wolf leagues. Both great leagues. P pretty much the best practice you can get online. For serious chess. Let's play H6. Establish the extended bathtub. Very solid in the center. And now I want to start playing probably down the C file eventually. You know, you might think you want to aggressively use these pawns, but in my experience, you're often best off keeping those pawns where they're, where they're at in these kind of like exchange caro con structures. Because if you start advancing them, they become brittle pretty quickly. Oh, hello to the first time chatters. Hello, Phil says, hi, John. What do you think? How important is it to play against stronger opponents as a beginner? Good question. You know, I, I think playing up a little bit in strength is always a pretty good idea. I'm definitely in favor of that. You want to play someone who you have a chance against for sure. Now, this will be interesting. I bet the game has a decent chance of going C3, Queen C4, Queen C2, Queen takes H4. Let's see. Yep. So yeah, you want to play someone um, who's decent that you still have a chance against, but they're not going to just like wipe the board with you, basically. <laughs> psychic, yes. Yeah, I got my psychic uh, prediction in for the day. <laughs> Thank you, Albert, for the game. Because it, it's, it's kind of meta. It's psychological, right? White's down a pawn. They know that they're struggling. I'm offering a queen trade here. And a lot of players are going to want to keep queens on board because... They think it might give them a better chance. And this bishop is sitting geographically a long ways away from what's going on on this side of the board. It's very easy to tunnel and miss a long-range move. Very easy to miss that. So I, I harp on that pretty much every week, but you got to watch those long-range moves, especially queen and bishop moves diagonally, although this is a lateral one. Thank you, Albert. You were doing fine. You just dropped that pawn on d4. Yeah. So right when I castle, knight takes d4 is on, and I'm sure you immediately realized your mistake. All right. Thanks for the game. Zakama. All right, 21-33. I got to concentrate. You know, I had a couple close calls earlier in the stream today. And, uh, yeah, you know, against the 2,000-plus opponents, if I lose my focus for a minute, I can easily lose. Will you become GM? I don't know. Remains to be seen. <laughs> Should I play a Benko? No, my opponent doesn't give me a chance. I'm going to play on Knight Takes D4. I'm going to play a line that I saw international, the late international master Mike Valvo play many, many years ago. 
American international master. And I saw him like successfully using this line and I kind of liked it. So I started playing it myself. It's this early a6. Early a6 to guard the b5 square so you can prep d5 and often e5 along with it. And I'm currently up a pawn. So it's working out okay here. How long have I been playing chess? I've been playing since I was uh, eight years old. And I'm 35 now. And I would say I've been playing competitively uh, since I was, I think, I think 10. Yeah, so I've been playing competitively a quarter century now, which is crazy. Just blows me away. But I'm very grateful to be in the chess world. I think my first rated tournament was like, yeah, it's probably about right. It was, I think it was 98, 1998. What is your favorite music for long car rides? Oh, you got to go with classic rock. Absolutely. Got to get some uh, Boston Journey, some ACDC. Um, I would also say, for me, prog rock, progressive rock is... Uh, Rush, I've mentioned many times, my favorite band. Oh, yeah, Pink Floyd. Yeah, you got to get some Pink Floyd in there. 100%. Let's play Rook C8. Well, thank you, Anton. Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, you got you to get some Jimmy Buffett in there. Many of you know this, but my fin, uh, Fins comes from a Jimmy Buffett song called Fins. Fins to the left, Fins to the right. You're the only bait in town. New World Man, that's a great song. Love that song. That's an appropriate, that's like a timeless, lesser known Rush song. Should I play F5? I don't know. F5 96. I probably will need to eliminate that, uh, that knight. I think I missed my opportunity to play knight C5, knight B3. I think now I'm going to castle, actually. I'm just going to castle knight D6. I'm going to play around that knight. Usually you don't want to do this, but this is practically white's only piece, and I think I want to keep my dark score bishop, so I'm going to play to gradually encircle the knight or uh, kick it out. I only know Limelight by Rush. You probably know Tom Sawyer as well. That's uh, their most famous song. Oh, yeah, those are great options, too. Yeah. All right. This is instructive. I'm keeping the position together as much as possible, but Zakama is doing a good job of undermining. They can undermine further if they want. B3 would have been interesting there. I definitely would have played B3 if I were white. Now, F4, mm, debatable if F4 is a good idea. Probably not. This is a little bit tricky against the two bishops, I got to say. I need to be careful. Because the lack of the dark square bishop, I know I traded it here when I said I didn't want to trade it. But the lack of the dark square bishop does make this a little bit squirrely. Let's do this now. I also need to speed up. Mm, I don't like that move. I think bishop d2 should have been played. Let's go here. Okay, now I have knight b3 if I want. Also knight c5. My pieces are coming to life. And if take, take, rook takes, knight b3. It'd be a fork at the end. Now here... Nice to play F3. I don't quite have time. Or do I? Do I, do I? Nah, let's just play this one. Keep it simple when you're in time pressure. Don't overcomplicate. I'm going to take now. Well, <laughs> I say that and I'm like, eh, yeah, let's go with the knight in. They're pretty strong. Okay, 16 seconds. I got to concentrate. I can't talk about rush too much, unfortunately, right now. 
as much as I would like to. Oh, but then we win this. Winning a grip of material. Oh, and another four coming. Another one. The Knights are having a field day. We can pre-move this, I think. The Knight Raid. Look at this. Oh, this is brutal. We can pre-move that. Check. Checkmate. Queen promotion. Checkmate. Supported by the bishop. Also guarding the A3 square. Whew. All right. Interesting game, Zekama. I think, let's see if B3 gave you a chance. You, you did a good job of, like, creating some pressure. Ooh, bishop takes C6. Even better. This is the position where I was saying B3. Yeah, it really hates rook A1. Um, B3 is probably bad, too, for some reason. Knight B4. Okay, so the engine believes you should trade. And then bishop A7? That's real specific. Oh, because ah, it's actually just pretty concrete. Because that forces the rook away from b5. That's hard to see. Don't you guys think? Let me see from the white side if I would be considering that at all. Because the theme is here, black's up a pawn, and white is trying to attack my structure, trying to open the position for the two bishops. When people say open the position, they often mean uh, trading pawns to create open files, diagonals, all that stuff. Yeah, I don't know that that would be on my radar in a blitz game. That's, that's a very specific idea where you give this outwardly strong bishop and then play a real like extended bishop move to boot on the next move. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, that's a tough one in a blitz game. Yeah, I was thinking B3 because that, that leaned further on the structure. So like take, take, B3. I can't take because then I lose C6. But the engine's just not very impressed by that. It just says knight here. And the difference is, in this iteration of this, my rook is still on C7, so it's guarding the A7 square. It's an important nuance. Yeah, right, Dr. Fianchetto? GHH agrees. You both said I would never. You would never consider or play that in a blitz game. Yeah, I kind of agree. Levy looks older. It, do people really think I look like Levy? People were writing, a couple of people were writing that. Um, I was on his podcast recently. I don't really see the resemblance. Maybe because we both have a big forehead. <laughs> but yeah, multiple people have commented that. So I don't know. Thanks for the game, Zach Hama. Okay, Aryan. Hey, we played before many a time. All right, good luck, Aryan. Thank you for always being present, by the way, Ariane. I do appreciate that. Let's play a Sicilian. I think it's the face, facial hair. You look nothing like Levy. Many people saying that. Interesting. There's no consensus. Okay, this I think should be pretty nice for me. How do I want to play this? I'm going to go bishop f5. Is e5 in the Alapin usually not a great idea? This is an improved French. That's right, element. Yeah, the tree is gone. I'm sorry to inform you. The tree has departed for the season. It's still over there, but uh, it's, it's no longer up. Yeah, I agree with that assessment, Mark John. All right, let's try to challenge. I want that bishop here. I'm going to take with the queen, actually. I think that's just the better way to capture at this point. Improve French or Caracon? Um, definitely an improved French, because in the French, when you get this structure, like in the advanced variation, that bishop is locked in inside the pawn chain. Let's go here now. I'm going to hint at b5. And if there's a bishop c2 operation, I think that should play to my favor, but we shall see. I think Feingold was more accurate when he said you look like Sean McVay. Yeah, I agree with that comparison. That one I can understand. Let's play rook c8. I'm going to defend my queen. Sean McVay, by the way, is the 
uh, head coach of the LA Rams American football team. Kind of random. I know many of you don't care about American football. I, I personally don't really care a whole lot about American football either, but I just wanted to clarify that. All right, now let's go B5. Oh, but he's going to take with the knight, of course. I don't know why I thought he was going to take with uh, the queen. That's patently ridiculous. What about, what about B4 here? Can I get away with B4? I'm trying to introduce some tactic down the file, but I'm just not sure it's working. Now, I'm already thinking a little too much, so I'm going to go here. Well, thank you, Osla Papa. I appreciate you saying that. Hopefully, we get a game. We're uh, down the home stretch of this stream. We got about uh, 25 minutes left, but there's still time. Okay, my opponent's trying to force the issue. I think now I do have to take. Does take with the knight. All right, let's just play knight g6. This is fine. I'll just go from here. John, where do the kingside pieces belong in this structure? Asks LB Hikes. That's a great question. So when the black pawn is on e6 and the white pawn is guarding here, usually you want this knight coming to g6 and then bishop e7, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Maybe this knight will go to f5 as well via e7 or sometimes even h6 to f5, but that means the light square bishop would not be there. So it is a little situational. All right, I like this a lot because this side of the board doesn't seem like much of a concern to me at present. Um, maybe white could play h4 or get creative somehow. And I'm going to start playing on the side of the board where my structure is pointing, where I have more space, which is the queen side. White doesn't have much pawn play here. They've got space, but there's no further forward pawn moves that I particularly have to worry about, if that makes sense. Let's take this now. And I'm going to start maneuvering. I really think white should have played h4 somewhere. I mean, this is still very much a battle, don't get me wrong. But I think h4 at some point would have been more challenging. Um, I think I can take, because I'm noticing now I have bishop e4. Ah, oh, but then queen b2. That's annoying. Queen b2 pins. Mm. Oh, I got to hurry up. Let's go queen b5. All right, full concentration. Still somewhat better here, I think, but the time is a huge factor. Mm. Now let's do this. He's guarding B4, so I'm just going to play it like this. Arguably, playing H5 is kind of weakening, but I want a pass pawn. Give me a pass pawn. Okay. Bring this back. Ay, ay, ay. I guess I got to let that pawn drop. Doesn't take it, though. All right, what's going on here? Not sure. I think I might be losing. I'm going to have to fly. Oh. He's dropping stuff. Am I going to win this? Oh! Oh! Good game, Aryan. <laughs> I couldn't find the checkmate. Oh, good game. I tried to pre-move a bunch of stuff at the end. It didn't work. <laughs> GG's. <laughs> he was hiding behind those pawns. I couldn't I couldn't smoke out the white king. 
<laughs> Did I have a mate somewhere? Uh, not an easy one that I see. I mean, probably something with like knight e4, knight g3. No immediate checkmate, though. I was just trying to flag him. Oh, did I have Rook takes G4? That was the mate. That was the mate right there. <laughs> you know, I think actually Aryan managed to defend just fine. I didn't really have anything if he played Rook takes A6, I think. Maybe Black has a little bit of compensation, but it's probably... Yeah, Rook takes A6, pretty much equal. White would be up a pawn at that point, but these pieces are kind of bad. And I wasn't able to do much with my time situation, which was pretty poor throughout. I think, um, nah, this is all fine. I just need to play, play faster so I don't have two seconds left when I get to a position like this. <laughs> Thanks for the game. You are the first player to beat me today. Well done. Congrats. And that breaks the streak that you had. Okay, Kiron BN. As I said, if I am not on my ball against the 2,000-plus players in particular, and even some players lower than that, um, I can easily lose. You guys are tough. Okay, let's play C6. John, when I plateau in Rapid slash Blitz, I go back to puzzles. What to do when I plateau in puzzles? <laughs> Um, I would say get down on your knees and start praying. No, I'm just kidding. Um, probably you want to get some feedback from like a player stronger than you. Um, maybe someone who's a little bit higher rated or a coach, ideally. Play longer games. I don't think you're going to like study your way out of a slump. Mainly, it's mostly going to just take more reflection of your existing play. But don't worry about that. Um, those plateaus will happen. Your knowledge takes a while to consolidate. Let's go work C8. Sure thing. Mm, okay, I'll play A5. Usually a pretty good reaction to this. All right. I got to try to maintain a reasonable level for today. Uh, I took one loss, took an L, but I can still end this stream on a good note. I don't mind losing against you guys. I think it's good that people take me down in these streams. It makes it much more interesting. And many of you deserve it. I'm thinking about Bishop takes B1 here and then Knight D5, but I'm not totally convinced by it. Let's play bishop e4. I feel like this is just a better move. Because now, if f3, I think white's going to get a really bad position. Any thoughts on initiating a speedrun series? Yeah, that would be interesting. If I did it, it would definitely be um, on Lee Chess, because I've already done some chess.com ones uh, several years ago. So I think it'd be interesting to do it on Lee Chess. Oh, hello, Bug Hunter. Yeah, good to see you. All right, let's take that. Now, I could, I could think about e5 if I want. e5, take, knight takes. I drop my queen, but then I take white's queen immediately. But I can also work up to that. Because there's rook d7 at the end. Doesn't quite seem like the best timing for me. So, oh, but then there's knight takes e6. I got to watch out for that. Queen c7. Queen c7, could he play knight d5? It's kind of crazy looking, but it might actually... Ah, no, that doesn't work in the slightest. Let's go here. Because now if knight takes e6, I can take and play rook here, and that's fine. Okay, so I think I'm going to go e5 here. Yeah, let's do it. Again, got to watch my time. Oh, yeah. I did what, what people call a speed run a long time ago. Uh, check out my Climbing the Rating Ladder on YouTube or Chess Fundamentals. I was doing that back in like 2015, 2016. And I still make Climbing the Rating Ladder videos from time to time. Mm. 
Mm. I agree, Dunskies. I think that would be great to do. More more videos on like old master games. Okay, I like my position here. I think I'm a little bit better in this position. Not a huge amount, but comfortably better. Let's go. He's trying to gear up for F4. Let's just go here. I'm going to let F4 get played. Because it kind of overextends for white, I feel. So let's give a check. Then I'm going to come back. White's king looks a little weak to me now. In some of the other squares, like if I post a knight here, my position, on the other hand, is quite compact. I'll tell you what's not compact, though, is my time situation. If that makes any sense at all, probably not. That is messy. There are loose ends when it comes to my time management. I'm trying to get into B4. Why does some annoying moves here, though? Not going to lie. Okay, this doesn't look that convincing, though. Now, don't I just take this? I'm up a pawn. Up a pawn. Let's take and come back. Trying to convert. Queen c4, I think, is a nice move, because if we get a trade, that's going to be trouble for white. This should be dropping. Take this one. F5, here we go. All right, I'm winning. Well, even then, there's a check. I'm going to get flagged. Ah, I'm getting flagged. Ah. <laughs> Good game, Kieran Bien. Yeah, too slow once again. Very fast player. GG. I lose two in a row. Yep. I spent too long trying to figure out how to uh, convert. Yeah, and White had this and this, which made things more complicated. So it wasn't a clean win of a piece. Oh, that was a rated game, yeah. Kieran taking my rating points. <laughs> yeah. I think that was much better later in the middle game and end game, but just too slow. Too slow. Once I think... Um, this was played like knight g2, f4, check. I think black's starting to get some, some nice play. The engine says it's actually still equal right about here. Probably knight f5. Knight f5 would have been better. Oh, thanks, Anton. But this, this kind of fizzled for white. But yeah, unfortunately for me, f5 was not winning a piece cleanly. I think if that had won a clean piece, I probably would have won this game. But as played, my opponent was very, very fast. <laughs> so kudos to Kiran. How much time do we have left? We got 10 minutes still. Well, we have time for two games. Okay, Dominic, good luck. I know, that's, that's some serious rating damage. All right, E6. Fortunately, my bullet rating is at a near all-time high, if not currently an all-time high. I think I'm like 2740-ish in bullet. I play a fair amount of the arenas on Lee Chess, and those have been going well. What do I think of the King's Gambit, wise or foolish? I think the King's Gambit, if you're playing for results, is foolish. If you're playing for fun, could be wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. I don't necessarily have to react to that move, but I guess I'll play... Mm. I don't know, actually. I might just go here. We're going to bide our time. I'll play queen c7. I don't mind a trade of the dark square bishops. And now, on queen takes, 
Just put pawns on light squares. I saw a game like this from the Charlotte Norm tournament recently. Uh, today, actually. There's a game between Camille Dragoon and Michael Lee, where Black had a similar structure out of a Carol. Knight c5, interesting move here. I could also play pawn c5. Or knight f6, and then let's play... Um, Let's actually play c5 directly. I know I'm giving this pawn, but I think the opening of the position could actually favor me despite white having the bishop. Isn't any opening good if you know what you're doing? Generally, that's true element. Although king's gambit, you're really kind of pushing it if you're playing it in a serious game. Whoa. Okay, I didn't expect this. Interesting approach. I feel like queen b6 is a good move here. Let's try it. Because white's going to be all pinned up if they take on d4. Also, b2 might hang. Oh, and uh, I guess take would open up the defense here, so I probably don't want to do that. I could play d3 and then take, but I don't know if I want to because I might just take back. Probably just do that. Let's pre-move that. Nepo likes the King's Gambit. Yeah, he did make a course on that. Too bad he never played it in the World Championship, right? People were speculating once he was down heavily late in the match that he might try it, but he never did. <laughs> Sag. All right, should I take this one? Or should I just double? Let's take this one. I think um, I think playing rook d8 would have been the clinical way to play it, but this is probably the better way to play it. Take here now. Now I'm up two pawns. Mm, yeah, let's go here. If rook a1, take... Take, take, take a7. I should be able to win that endgame. I could take f4. Rook takes b7. Up two pawns. Perfect structure. That might happen. Just don't play rook takes c4 here because then queen d8 check. That's how you can get in trouble with those in-between moves. I could also, you know what I could do here? This might be instructive. I might do this. Okay, he takes here, so it's a moot point. But I was thinking of keeping the B-pawn in the Rook ending. That would have been playable as well. And I think here... I mean, you could... That's probably just take now. Take and maybe just trade the, the Rooks. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to put the Queen on C3, which is a great diagonal because White's going to check me at some point from the back rank. I get to go here. And so I posted the queen where white has no further checks. And then I can start uh, running the pawns. This will be easy because white traded queens. But uh, even if they hadn't, my king was super safe there. That's the most important thing in these end games with queens. If you're up a pawn or two, you want a safe king because the chances of a perpetual are extremely high in these. Is uh, just one issue you constantly have to think about. All right, and I'm up three pawns here. I should be able to get the job done. No Rosen trap. Checkmate. Okay. Thank you, Dominic, for the game. I think you probably played this a little too aggressive, like F4. Your rook placement here, it'd be better if the rooks were on like D1 and E1 versus E1 and D1 and E1 and F1. Because as played. Yeah, I don't know. I, it just feels like you're playing with fire with this. Maybe you can grab b7 or something, but I'm pretty well situated on the d file, ready to attack d4. And you'd, you'd like to hedge against that, ideally, and have a rook on d1. That was, yeah, instructive. Okay, so I win one. I break the streak of two losses. Now, an even bigger test. Our final game of the day. Thank you, everyone, for joining.
This will be the last game of today's Lee Chess play stream. Shout out to Lee Chess as usual, as well as the mods, Numeroid, and No Joke Chess. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks everyone for watching. We're doing invisible, invisible pieces. You can select this too, by the way, if you ever want to play blindfold. And if you want to watch the game and see the actual pieces move, you can follow me on Lee Chess. Fins is my username. Or you can just look at it from my perspective, which is a completely blank board. Oh boy, this is going to be tough. 2,000 rated player. Jeremy ASC, let's do this. I'm black. Three minute. I really got to concentrate and uh, manage my clock well here. Thank you, No Joke Chess, for dropping that link. Jeremy, are you there? This will be a challenge. I don't know if Jeremy's present, though. All right, let's go to another one. <laughs> I got upgraded to a 2100. I'm black again in this game. Dasteg, I can't even pronounce that name. Dasteg, are you there? AFK again? Give me a 2300. <gasps> okay. Paid actors. Paid actors. They, uh, they had mercy on me. They know what kind of task I have at hand here. So <laughs> this will still be really difficult. Um, okay, Smith Mora Gambit. I'm going to decline. I'm going to play D3. Here we go. <laughs> That's too funny. The 2000 and the 2100 were AFK. This is a decent way to decline the gambit. You can also play knight f6 if you want. Totally reasonable. Transpose it to a alipin. But I kind of like this one because white's pawn on c3 is not the best. It's kind of the point of this setup. It blocks their knight from coming out. I have been playing black in a lot of these games. You're right. Not exclusively, but uh, that has been a theme. Hmm. Knight a3. Okay, I'm going to go here. I'm thinking of bishop g4 at some point. We'll see where white places their remaining pieces. Knight b5. I don't think that's anything to worry about. Let's just castle. Knight d4. Yeah. But so what? Let's pin. Pre move this capture. White wants to take, that's fine by me. Okay, it goes there. And now, probably... Let's take. And then I might play the knight back to d7 to unveil my bishop against d4. I got a time edge, that's good. Okay, so white takes with the knight. Let's play the knight back anyways. I see the position in my head pretty clearly right now, so I'm not worried about that. Bishop g5. My pawn's on e7, so no problem. Mm -hmm. Let's go rook e8. White's playing a little bit faster now. Uh, queen c7. b4. Wait a second. Isn't that pawn undefended? Is that pawn not undefended? White didn't play a3, did they? This is kind of cheating if you're doing like a pure blindfold game, which I'm not. I'm going to take it. I don't think white's played a3, though. So that's why I'm taking it. <laughs> well, I was right that white had not played a3, but I forgot that that pawn was there. <laughs> oh, rookie mistake. Oh, boy. All right. Let's just play fast. I still have a chance. <laughs> My main premise was correct. Uh, wait a second. I want to take with the queen. Where's that bishop? Bishop's still on d3. Yeah, I know why I made that mistake, too. Oh, this position's really bad now. Darn. I made that mistake because usually the pawn is on c4. And in my mind's eye, it was. 
in this line, they often push it there, but White didn't do that. Very poor. All right. I got to kick that bishop out somehow. Hmm. Let's play knight f6. It's hard to play h6, though, because white has, has the queen and the bishop loaded up here. I guess I'll pre-move this capture. Bishop h6, okay. Um, Let's get this over. If I can get a trade going, that might be nice. Hit take. I mean, I guess for now... Hmm, knight d4. So the queen's defending there. But can I win a pawn now? Take. This pawn's hanging, right? I gotta try it. I am up time here. Oh no, the bishop's there still. Wow, I'm making a lot of mistakes this game. I apologize, guys. This is a very poor effort on my part. I'm just gonna play fast. I have to try to flag my opponent. Dang, I am really struggling in this one. Knight back. Okay, let's go f5, I guess. Go here. Keep queens on board. Only chance. Queen back. Okay, queen here. Mmm... Was king f1? Okay. Can I take this? This is with check, right? Uh, check again. Plan for the win. I won! Oh my. Despite all of that, I somehow won. Thank you. Thank you for the game. Uh, yeah, that was just really sloppy. I hung two pieces that game. Oh, thank you very much. All right, we'll take a quick peek at that before we wrap up. Again, thanks to everyone for challenging today. I apologize if I didn't get to your game. That really went downhill when I thought white blundered a beat, uh, the uh, pawn. When in fact it was perfectly safe. But this is sometimes how these mistakes happen in these games. Because again, usually white pushes the pawn to c4 in this line. And I thought b4, this was undefended. Ah, oh, very nice. That's good to hear. So I blundered that. But then really, like losing track of where their bishop was is pretty inexcusable. I think I just got lazy here. I didn't stop to think that that pawn was defended. Still a higher accuracy than most of my games. That's funny. Uh, thank you for making me laugh, LB Hikes. All right, I saw this pretty clearly at this point. I was just playing for the flag here. We got a jump. We got the job done. All right, there we go. So, uh, you know, remember, the clock is a piece as well. You can always go for the flag, regardless of the time control. <laughs> got to go. Bye. Yeah, I should do that. Got to go. Bye. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why that's funny to me, but it just is. Yeah, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to Lee Chess Plays. This is a blast. Congrats to the two players who took me down, Ariane and also, as well as uh, Kieran. We are raiding New Chess. New Chess. So show New Chess some love. I'll probably see you guys next Sunday. Enjoy your week, everyone. Take care. Be well. Thanks again to everyone who joined in today and uh, hope to play many of you next time. All right, bye.